good happy Tuesday morning April 19 2022 I'm Riley King welcome to this Tuesday morning edition of your morning news update right here on the Riley King radio network let's get started everyone happy Tuesday a rainy Tuesday out there for all of you this morning but just stay dry enjoy this morning news update as you're driving along or wherever you're listening to this morning news update. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started with the morning news update right now. First up, Conquer Police warn of scam call. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A warning from Conquer Police. They've received reports that someone's trying to impersonate them for cash. The department says the calls are spoofed to look like they come from the city of Concord. Police say the scammers tell people there's a warrant out for their arrest and paying money will get them out of it without going to the department. If you receive a call like this, call Concord Police. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Driver who caused multi-crash in Nashua dies from injuries. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Tonight, state police say a Merrimack woman has died a week after she caused a four-vehicle crash while driving the wrong way on the Everett Turnpike in Nashua. The 83-year-old passed away yesterday from injuries she received in that crash. Police say she was driving north in the southbound lane, hitting a truck head-on, which later hit several other vehicles, including a Jeep that flipped over. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dunbarton registered sex offender arrested after police say he had contact with children. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A registered sex offender from Dunbarton is facing a list of felony charges tonight after police say he helped his girlfriend babysit two children. Police say he also did not report where he was living as required by law. Peter Ramos, his girlfriend Elizabeth Kincaid, was also arrested on several other charges, including endangering the welfare of a child. Both are free on personal recognizance bail tonight. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Airlines drop mask requirement after federal judge rural CDC overstepped its authority. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. At Booking.com, finding perfect isn't rocket science. Kitchen? Sorted. Hot up? Why not? And of course, puppy friendly. We don't like to say perfect, but it's pretty perfect. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Traveling will once again look a little different. A federal judge from Florida struck down the White House's mask mandate for airplanes and other public transportation. The CDC most recently extended it for two weeks until May 3rd to give more time to study the BA2 Omicron subvariant. I think that's a very good development. I was looking forward for it to happen for quite some time. That will definitely make flying more enjoyable. The way things are going and numbers are starting to come back up again. I think they should still be required. But I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever is safe and, you know, we're, we're, we'll go with the flow. While travelers at Manchester Boston Regional Airport have varying opinions, the White House has one word for the ruling, disappointing. Certainly no one here is trying to provoke uncertainty with passengers. We also think the mask mandate should be in place and that it's safer for individuals who are flying to continue to wear masks. So we would say to anyone sitting out there, we recommend you wear masks on the airplane. The court decision means masks will no longer be enforced by the TSA. Tonight, major airlines, including American, United, Southwest, and Delta, all announced that they are mask optional, but the CDC still recommends they be used. The Department of Justice has not said if it will try to appeal the ruling. One thing to keep in mind, masks could still be required based on local ordinances or on international flights. Live in the newsroom, Grace Feinerman, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Breakdown removal of mask mandates. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. 
We have someone now who can answer all of our questions here, clarify it all. Joining us now for more on when is the right time to mask is Stanford Children's Hospital physician, Dr. Alok Patel. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. So regardless of what the courts decide, this mask mandate on federal transportation was set to expire on May 3rd. Would you personally feel comfortable being on a plane at this point without a mask? Well, Lindsay, it's good to be here. And I will tell you right now, in terms of my own personal health, I am not as afraid of being on an airplane without a mask. The reason I still wear a mask is because I have a young daughter. She's going to be a year old this Thursday, which that is a good celebration, but she's not eligible to be vaccinated. If I was also immunocompromised, I would be scared to be on an airplane right now. People around me weren't wearing a mask, but I will still keep one on me. I will still be wearing one. I might be less scared in May when we have a little bit more data about what BA2 is really going to be capable of doing. As of right now, we just don't have all the data and all the questions answered yet. All right, makes sense there. So if you're in an environment soon, say on a plane where you have a mask on, but others do not who are around you, is it more important then for you to wear a mask with a higher levels of protection like an N95 or a KN95? It is, but there's an asterisk there, Lindsay. You know, the studies have shown that when both people, if both people are involved in a conversation, you're throwing drop, droplets back and forth, and both individuals are wearing a high-quality mask, such as an N95, transmission is going to be very low. In one study, less than 1%. It's going to be a higher, obviously, if you're wearing no mask or a cloth mask. If you're wearing yourself a fitted N95 mask, which, remember, getting fitted for an N95 mask is not an easy task that is done with healthcare professionals in a hospital setting so K95 is not going to be a perfect fit either but there is still some level of protection i just feel for those out there who have children under the age of 5 or people who are immunocompromised who are essentially being told to fend for themselves in this environment and Philadelphia officials reinstated, as you know, their indoor mask mandate today. It's the only major city at this point to do so. Would you say that this city is ahead of the curve or are they being overly cautious? I think we'll know in two weeks, and I think that's a very important question we're asking. It strikes me as an abundance of caution, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because we do know that hospitalizations are going to lag a rise in cases by a couple of weeks. So we'll truly know in May if we have something to be worried about with BA2. And Lindsay, hospitalizations and deaths are not the only metric because we still have to worry about transmission to those who are most vulnerable and long COVID as well. So hopefully we have some more clear data and we'll know if this was an abundance of caution or if this was the right move. We thank you for clarifying all of this for us, Dr. Alok Patel. Appreciate your time and insight as always. Thank you. Hi. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. That is it for the morning news update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Have a great day, everyone, and goodbye.